All right, let's talk about addiction. Um, now, this is, I've filmed this video multiple times, <laughs> and I hate doing that because then I forget what I said. I don't want to repeat myself. And, um, my car's been moved. I don't know if anyone notices that, but it looks like we're going to fix this car. That's going to be my cheapest option. Um, what I don't want is to buy something else used and have some sort of money pit to deal with. You'll see. You'll see. I, I, I think we're going to fix this one. So then I've got a car that I'm not afraid to get a few dings and dents. You know what I mean? Um, if I go and buy something else, I'm going to be treating it like it's a Lamborghini. I'm going to be all worried about it. This thing, I do love my little CRV, but and it's a tough little car. That, that's not what this video is about. Anyways, let me get to this. This is why I end up filming things 20 times because... I start talking about something else, and then I'm like, oh shit, that's not, <laughs> that's not what I'm filming here. So, um, I want to talk about addiction. Now, as most of you know, I used to be addicted to heroin. I managed to get off it. I haven't gone back since, and here's why. Now, the thing, a, a lot of people, their issue with addic addiction is there's this stigma with addiction, like, oh, you're an addict for life. I... I don't really agree with that. I have no interest in doing heroin again. If someone offered it to me for free right now, I don't think I'd do it. And I do believe that I could do it one time and not be addicted to it. I just, uh, why would I even mess with it? <laughs> you know, after what it did, wasted about seven years of my life battling this, this shit. Like, I don't want to open that, reopen that box. Do I miss it? No, not at all. Um, in fact... I'm so far past it. I'm at a point now where I'm like, how was I even so addicted to this depressing? I'm, I'm not even into, like, you know, uh, feeling like that. I, I'm a high energy type person a lot of the time. I like to work out and, you know, I like to do, I like to sit around and stare at my phone too. Don't get me wrong. But, um, I'm 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 not into well I I guess I do like weed too. I, anyways, I don't know. But um what I don't like is to be so messed up on something that I'm not functioning functioning as my normal self, which is what heroin does. It it you you're not your normal self. You're a knocked out version of it. You're a different version of yourself on it. You're just this goofy, you know. You, you're just, like, you're in another world when you're on that shit. And so that's another reason I don't like to drink that much. Because when I'm drinking, I am basically a different person, you know. Um, I can't, if I'm doing nothing except chilling in my whatever and working out and, you know, going to cook or whatever, I don't want to be drunk for that. If, if I'm drunk, I want to go hang out and party with people. I don't want to feel that way every day. I don't. You know, I, I do get how people do get addicted to alcohol, though, because I experienced it. So when I was, I was still on heroin at this point. And every day when I'd get to my spot in Central Park, one of the musicians was a heavy alcoholic. And he'd be like, yo, Joe, you want a shot? And for whatever reason, I was like, yeah, I'll do a shot. Fuck it. And he'd pour me a little in it and I'd do a shot or two. And it just... I wasn't getting drunk. I was getting this teensy, slight little buzz, which was kind of making me feel a little better. And after about a week of that, I was starting to get, like, addicted to it. I'm like, I better stop with this. So then Jock comes in one day. He's like, you want a shot? I'm like, honestly, I do. And that's the problem. I'm never taking another shot because I, I got this one addiction. I'm not trying to have another one. My buddy Jock was addicted to heroin and alcohol, which a lot of people on the street in New York are, they're addicted to both. So I was like, uh, I, I saw it. I nipped it in the bud. I, I felt myself getting addicted to alcohol, something I never thought would happen to me because I don't even like to be drunk. But here's the problem. I wasn't getting drunk. I was getting this slight little buzz that felt really good and then not drinking anymore. You know what I mean? So I do get it, how people get addicted to alcohol. I think one of the big mistakes they make is they'll they'll catch that little buzz solo, and then they get addicted to that. And the next thing you know, your tolerance goes up. You're sitting there drinking a case of beer every day, 
you know what I mean? But so, um, now here's the thing with me. I, I'm like way off track here. My, my point in this video is I want to talk about getting off the, now, yeah, I was addicted to heroin, but it, it, here's the thing. Now I'm back to being addicted to weed, and that's the truth. So I, I even made a video about how easy it is to quit smoking weed. Here's the problem. When I made, I, I, I basically quit smoking weed just to show everyone kind of how easy it is and make a video about it and explain exactly how I did it. And so that's what I did. Here's the problem. I was still really um, enjoying the weed at that point. Now, the reason, the reason I haven't gone back to heroin is because the last four or five times I did heroin, I had such negative experiences that it made me disgusted with it. So, um, it, it was no longer like when, by the time I got off it, all I wanted was to feel normal again. It, I didn't have to force myself. Um, I was disgusted with, with opiate, with opiates and heroin at that point, because like I said, I, here's the thing. Now, if you're not familiar with this stuff, when you're addicted to heroin, it's, it's hard to quit cold turkey, but it's not impossible, and I've done it a bunch of times. Now, here's the problem. When I would quit cold turkey, which takes about, it would take about four or five days for me. Other people have different experiences, but for me, I'd be dope sick for about four or five days, and it would peak around day two, day three. Once I got past day three, I was in the clear. I still didn't feel right, but I knew I was good. But day two and day three, boy, that's some nightmare shit. If you ever seen the movie Train Spotting, where he's freaking out and seeing like a dead baby crawling on the ceiling and stuff, I didn't have any hallucinations. But I've got to say, other than that, I wasn't like sitting there freaking out and stuff. But God, I felt, man, it it is bad, and it it does last at least a day. The peak it is so bad, anyways. But it's not like in Train Spy. That's a little over dramatic. Um, another movie, The Basketball Diaries. It's a little over dramatic. He's offering to give the dude head to get heroin. That didn't happen to me. I can promise you that. <laughs> Would I have done that for heroin at that time? No. In fact, one of the times I kicked it called Turkey, I was on the street in New York. There was three or four people sleeping in the spot next to me that if I asked them for a bag of dope, they would have gave it to me for free. They knew I was suffering. They're like, damn, bro, you're going through it. <laughs> like, um, they weren't saying like, oh, if you want a bag, just ask me. But I could sense that these are friends of mine for years. It, they knew that they they knew I was going through it and I was not enjoying myself. And I also knew that all I had to do was ask my buddy Dave. And he was going to give me a bag for free, front it to me. So, you know, you know, the movie, the movies are kind of, I, it depends on the person. I, I guess a lot of people probably might have taken that bag, but not me. I was bent on quitting it. But here's the thing. Once I would kick it cold turkey, I'd be sober for a couple of days and I'd get to thinking to myself, well... The reason I quit is because I couldn't afford four or five bags to get high. Now, I can just buy one bag and get high. So that, that's every time I would quit cold turkey, I'd get right back on it within a week or two. Every single time. And so this is why, now methadone, I never even did. I, I heard too many horror stories about it. Because I've heard it's harder to get off methadone than heroin. But now with me... So I, Suboxone was like a brand new thing when I was getting off heroin. So I was like, I'll try that. So that's what I did. I got on Suboxone and it worked exactly how it should have for me. It, um, the, the thing with Suboxone is it's, if you're on methadone, you can still do heroin. In New York, everyone I knew who was on methadone was still doing heroin. My, my buddy Ilya, my buddy Evan, uh, I'd get out to Central Park to do my portraits and Ilya would show up, and Evan would show up, and then three of us would get a hold of the dope man and get our dope. They were coming from the methadone clinic where they just did their methadone. So I realized that methadone does not stop you from doing heroin. It's just now you're addicted to methadone and heroin. 
that's how it was for a lot of the people I knew in New York. So once I heard it's boxing, I was like, maybe I'll go that route. Because when I was addicted to heroin, I was thinking to myself, why should I get on methadone if I'm just going to do both? Because that's what everyone around me was doing. So I'm like, I'm, and all of them were telling me like, look, look, just stay on the fucking heroin because the methadone, you know, you're just going to end up doing both like we do. And so that I followed their advice. Now, when the suboxone came around, the, the issue with suboxone is you got to really be ready to let the heroin go because suboxone blocks it. Now, this is why suboxone worked so well for me. So what I discovered was I didn't have to kick dope cold turkey no more. I could get some suboxone off some other dope end on the street, take a little tiny piece of the suboxone, and make it through being dope sick without even really being dope sick, you know? If So my advice is if you're addicted to heroin or whatever, get on Suboxone, but do the minimum amount possible. Don't, you know, a lot of these clinics are like, well, we're going to put you on, uh, you know, 20, uh, 20 milligrams of Suboxone, 30 milligrams of Suboxone. Uh, my advice is maybe get on four milligrams. The... If you can get on one milligram, just the minimum amount possible, because sooner or later you're gonna have to get off the suboxone. Now, so now I don't know what the fentanyl and shit. People claim that the suboxone doesn't even block the fentanyl. I don't know. I, I don't know if I even really believe that because I've been on suboxone where I did like a four milligram dose of suboxone yesterday, and, and then. I did enough heroin the next day to get through this box. And this is strong in New York City heroin. We were getting the best heroin in the world, the, you know, the highest quality in the world. And it would take me about 10 bags to break through that sub. And then I'd have this weird, shitty high. But so here's the thing, why the subs worked so well for me. Because while I was on the subs, I, I, if I would do heroin, it wouldn't be the, I, I would have to do a bunch of it. And it wouldn't even really get me high. So the last four or five times I even did heroin, I was on so much Suboxone that it ruined the high to the point where after, like I said, four or five times, I was like disgusted with it. And so I was so ready to quit and so done with it that, you know, once I quit, I was, I was done and I'm still done. I, you know, I don't have this happy, nostalgic memory of heroin. I have this negative shit feeling of wasting all my money and the last few times I did it I didn't even get high I'm like no I don't miss that miss that I'm glad to be away from it so my point here is that you know if you're addicted to something you got to get off it you should get off it but you can't just force you know your willpower upon it and force yourself off it because I mean look everyone's different do what works for you but my experience is when I would do that, I'd end up back on it. And so, and it was the same experience with the weed. Um, when I force myself off it, I get to missing it and I get back on it. And so, you know, what I do now and what I'm doing now to get off weed this time, I'm just smoking it when I want to smoke it. Now, I'm not the, you know, I, I, I don't even smoke till the end of the day before I go to sleep and I'm done doing everything I have to do. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep doing that until I'm sick and tired of it, until I'm bored off my ass, which I'm getting there, to be honest. And that's when I'll quit because then I won't miss it. I'll be like, no, this is, I don't miss it. I'm, this is, I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it. So you, you gotta you gotta be careful giving advice it, it, when it comes to addiction so what I'm saying is you know you, you can't you gotta really be ready to, to get off the shit now with something like opiates and heroin it, it's a dangerous game because any any you know any dose could be your last it's such a powerful thing that um yeah, that's why heroin's so dangerous. It's so easy to OD on it. I, I've got a video that explains the time I OD'd. And I only OD'd one time. And what annoys me in the comments in there is everyone's like, oh, when you OD, you just die. Like, uh, okay, buddy, you're gonna tell you're gonna tell me what I experienced. Like, 
people are so annoying. Like, an overdose is an overdose. Whether you overdose to the point of instant death, that's not what my experience was. I, I was in and out, you know? Anyways, watch the video. It, but I, here's the thing. That's my experience. People trying to argue with me in the comments, like, as if they lived <laughs> through it through my experience is trying to tell me what I experienced. Like, no, bro, what, you know, people can be really annoying. But so I am fully aware that giving advice is, is a, you know, you got to be real careful. That I'm very careful about what I say on YouTube. I, I don't want to, um, I don't want to have a negative I impact on people's lives. Um, I'm surprised how careless a lot of people are on YouTube. Um, take Andrew Tate for example he, he used to I'm not an anti Andrew Tate I'm not one of those people I do get a kick out of him I find him entertaining but he has said some truly stupid things on YouTube you, you know the internet is forever and people can always dig up the things you say so I'm very careful I'm sure I've said plenty of stupid things but um my main thing is I'm not trying to uh, say things that are going to cause harm in other people. So that's, you know, this addiction thing is very tricky to talk about because now, um, like I said, man, everyone knows, knows themselves, you know. So if you're addicted to something, my advice is don't just force yourself off it, but don't just... You know, you got to plan on getting off it. But here's the thing. You got you got to start looking at it differently. You got to start seeing it as, you know, if you're addicted to opiates, get on the Suboxone. That's my advice. Because then you can even go ahead and do a bag of dope and go ahead and waste your money. And if you waste enough money, you're going to get this weird shitty high that's going to feel like shit. And the high is so crappy that you'd rather be sober. So, you know, once you have a few of those experiences, you, you're going to be so disgusted with the shit that, that you don't, you know, you, your brain is no longer going to see it as this, oh, I miss, miss heroin. It's going to be like, I'm glad I don't got to deal with that no more. Now, this is the, you know, this, this, this is my tactic for weed right now. I'm going to smoke it till I'm sick of it. Which I'm getting there. I, I, it's I'm I'm already pr pretty much bored with it again, so I'm gonna keep smoking it until I am really bored with it, and then it's, you know, it's time to move on to the next thing. But what I don't want to do is force myself off it, go back on it, back to square one. Six eight months later, I'll be sick of it. And, you know what I mean? So I'm I'm just gonna smoke it till I'm sick and tired of it. And then I'll get off it. Um, and the same, I, I got another issue now. When I'm going out and doing stand-up, <laughs> they give me free drinks. And I go there with the intention of drinking, too. These are strong beers, too, at this brewery. I usually end up drinking four, five, six. I end up getting shit-faced and hammered and having a blast. But also saying and doing stupid things and acting a bit of a fool. So I guess I'm going to keep doing that until I do something stupid enough <laughs> to where I'm, like, disgusted with that. So, um, y you know, it's probably not the best advice I'm giving here. Like, everyone's different, but I know myself. And my thing is I I've got to have, like, a negative association in my mind with whatever it is in order to really get off it. So if you're addicted to something and you see no way out, that's what you got to do. You got to realize, um, you got to realize the negative aspects of it. And it's, like I said, something like opiates, get on the Suboxone. And that'll put plenty of negative experiences under your belt because, you know, that's how it was for me. I, I honestly, I am not a pharmaceutical salesman by any stretch of the imagination, but I've got to say, Suboxone is a brilliant thing when it comes to getting off of opiates because um, it blocks it, and you know you can you can go ahead and still do it. It's not going to have the impact that you want. It's going to change the way you feel about heroin to the point where 
it's just a pointless thing, wait, wasting money. And, and then the other thing with Suboxone is, I mean, I guess I should make another video with the exact instructions about how to get off Suboxone and just to get it back out in the circulation. There's a ton of videos I want to make where I'm like, man, I don't, I don't want to waste my um, views on that. But you know what? Maybe I should just start putting out more videos and get these smaller subjects out of the way. Um, and then, you, you know, maybe they'll get less views, but at least I'll get them out of my system. Um, I, I do want to make another video about it, but here's the, the, here's the gist of it with the Suboxone. It's easy to wean down on it. It's, it's, um, here's the trick. If you're not feeling right, do another little teeny tiny piece of Suboxone in between the doses. But once you shrink the dose, never make it bigger again. That this is the real trick, the real key to getting off Suboxone. One of my comments recently, someone was like, I've been on subs for 10 years. Here's what you do. Shrink your dose by even a minuscule amount, any amount. Just make it a little smaller. And now wait a couple of days. In, in between that time, if you don't feel right, take another little piece in between your doses, but do not up the dose. Now, keep doing that and keep shrinking it down. It took me about a year to go from, I think I was doing about four milligrams a day about a year later i was down to something so small you couldn't even measure it but so the real key with the suboxone is once you shrink your dose do not make the dose bigger it never gets bigger once it gets down to a certain size never make it bigger again if you feel real terrible in between do another little piece but stay on your regular schedule with a smaller dose and Eventually, you're going to adjust to the new dose, and then you can shrink it down again. And I'm telling you, it was mostly painless. I, I'll make a video about it. Anyways, let me watch this video, see if it makes sense. Appreciate every single one of you. Um, thanks for the subs, likes, comments, tips. Thanks for the Patreons. And if you're interested in uh, how this matrix actually works, go on my Patreon. And like I said, I'm open for debate. If you can find any inconsistencies or falsehoods in there, let me know. And we'll look into it. I'll look into it. And we'll figure it out. Anyways, appreciate every single one of you. And I'll see you on the next one. Everyone have a good one.